Boxing Troop here, back with another video. Make sure to smash that like button, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. All right, let's talk about Virgil Ortiz. And the question is, is he even really a welterweight? Because I don't understand what this pressure being put on Terrence Crawford to fight this prospect who hasn't even beaten a top 15 welterweight. The dude hasn't even beaten a top 10 welterweight top 15-ish welterweight, but he's ready for Crawford. He's going to knock Crawford out. He's going to expose him. He's going to annihilate him. Let's pump the brakes a little bit here. You know what I'm saying? I know you thirsty-ass boxing fans want to see some good fights, but let me just break it down to you. This fight's not even competitive. Like, Terrence Crawford is right when he says the fight ain't ready yet. He's not ready yet because that's just the, the reality of the situation. Virgil Ortiz needs some more seasoning. He needs to actually get in there with some natural, true welterweights, which he has yet to done. He's beaten, what, two tw top 25-ish welterweights? Sam Vargas, who's been just an opponent for up-and-coming welterweights. And Brad Solomon, who ain't shit. Just use that as an opponent. The thing is, Ortiz started his career at 140, and he hasn't really left that division, to be honest. I mean, he's, he's continuing to feast on 140-pounders. The only difference is he's fighting, men, he's fighting them at 147 pounds. So he's feasting on 140-pounders at a contracted limit at 147. Orozco was a 40-pounder. I was unimpressed in that fight. He was actually getting backed up by a smaller man. He did knock him out, though. Mauricio Herrera, he knocked him out. It was impressive. It was the first time he'd been knocked out. But Herrera was a little way past it in, in a division that he didn't belong in. He's a 140-pounder. And then he fought another 140-pounder at a contracted weight at 147. So... I don't understand where this pressure is coming from for Crawford to fight this cat. Like, what's the point? You know, let the, let the kid earn the shot like Crawford did when he earned his first world title opportunity. He became a mandatory. He had to go travel to, to the UK to fight Ricky Burns, but he had to become a mandatory to get that fight. Ortiz needs to climb the rankings actually beat a welterweight of note and then we could uh get a better sense of if he's truly going to be able to challenge Terrence Crawford because right now it's not much of a challenge for Terrence the fight will be good for about two three rounds and then Terrence is going to drown this kid and, and just pretty much is add a, add to his knockout streak that he's already added to you know, there's, you know, you can't cheat the grind in this game. You got to respect the pro the process. You got to respect the progress towards your, your way to a world title. I mean, this fight will look a lot like Larry Holmes, Marvin Frazier, if it was to happen next. This fight will look a lot like Floyd Patterson against Peter Rattermaker. This is Trinidad Vargas, even though at least Vargas was a champion. At least he had been tested going into that fight. This is Lomachenko Salido. You know what I'm saying? You can't cheat the progress. You can't go from... I mean, Canelo found out the same lesson. You can't go from Kermit Cintron to Floyd Mayweather. Lomachenko, you can't go from the amateurs and challenge... And go into a world title fight against an experienced veteran... Who knows all the dirty tricks in the game. And you had Lawrence Cole as the referee. That's just a recipe for disaster. And that's why Lomachenko took his first loss that early in his career. You can't cheat the progress. Respect the grind. Respect the levels in this game. Otherwise, he's just going to get exposed. Like Peter Rademacher against Floyd Patterson did. Just like Canelo did against Floyd Mayweather. Just like Lomachenko took his first L when he was supposed to be the greatest fighter that ever lived. And just like many fighters beforehand that cheated the progress and didn't respect the process in getting to that world title opportunity. I mean, I like Ortiz. He's an exciting fighter. 
comes to fight, he's explosive, but this thin ass resume of 40 pounders is not going to prepare him for a fight against Terrence Crawford, who's never even gotten past seven rounds in his career. This is a three round fight where Ortiz doesn't have the power to really do anything to Crawford because he hasn't really fought any seasoned welterweights. And right now, it's not a very competitive fight. He needs to get in there with a top 10 welterweight to, to really prepare him for that fight as best as possible. There really shouldn't be any pressure on Crawford to fight this cat when he hasn't done shit in his career. Hasn't even fought a top 10 welterweight. We should be pressuring Crawford to fight Sean Porter, Manny Pacquiao, Errol Spence, or any other top welterweight with a big name. Not some freaking guy who finally had his first main event and is still feasting on 140 pounders. Average 40 pounders at that. He's not even fighting the very best 40 pounders, but he's going to beat Terrence Crawford among the 10 best pound for pound fighters in the game. He's not in my top three, but I still have Crawford as a top 10 pound for pound fighter because of his body of work, because of his knockout streak, and because just how good he's looking in his fights, man. I don't see Terrence Crawford slowing down not this year, maybe even not next year. He's still in his physical prime. And he still hasn't been defeated. And he's knocking naturally strong welterweights out. Natural welterweights when he moved up from the lightweight division. So there ain't going to be no bigger man here. It's going to be a man against a boy. And right now, there's no need for that fight to happen. Let Ortiz get some more seasoning, get some more experience. Fight a top 10 welterweight like a Kavalowskis. That's the perfect opponent to really get a sense if he's ready for Crawford. If he does better work against Kavalowskis than Crawford then, then throw him in there. He's got to fight the Avenisians, the Danny Garcias, the Sean Porters. Respect the grind. Respect the progress. Take those fights to get you ready as, as possible for a Tanis Crawford. And who knows, maybe he's never be, he'll never be ready. But give, your, give yourself the best chance possible. Be prepared as possible as you can be. Have that experience. Get the 12-round distance in. Get in that tough fight against the top welterweight. And then roll the dice. When the fight's supposed to happen, when you enforce that mandatory against Crawford, or the demand is so high that Crawford, if he doesn't have any other significant opponents, then he'll end up taking that fight. But let's pump the brakes. Let's, you know, let's chill out here. Ortiz is on his way. He's climbing the rankings. But he needs to fight. He needs to stop. He needs to stop fighting 40 pounders, bro. Hopefully a top welterweight will be next. A top 10 welterweight contender for his next fight. This is Boxing Truth. I'm out.